welcome back, my young Pavons, to Plus the Mouse with our thoughts on episode 5 of Andor. Ooh, what webs we weave of mistrust. I had a feeling this was going to happen, you know. I had, a, I had a sense that it was not going all too well. And everyone's going to struggle to trust everyone, left, right, and centre. <laughs> Before that, let's get Mummy's boy out of the way first. <laughs> oh, how the mighty have fallen! <laughs> As Khan, following his dismissal from last week of his post, he's just been reduced to like a just a, like a complete wreck. He's literally just now. It's almost like you. You know, when you know, like when a young person's literally just trying to make them got got their first taste of independence, their freedom. They got themselves an apartment, a job, and everything. And then all of a sudden, it all goes rock, wrong. Lose everything. They basically have to try and think, oh, do I go home? Or do I have to go back to the family home? And of course, he went back to the family home. <sighs> literally, uh, it was so hard. I had to try and stop myself from laughing because I thought all the scenes when we see him with his mother. Was just so hilarious. <laughs> He's like, oh my god! It's like you, you are such a mummy's boy, boy car. You just literally can't seem to do anything for yourself. You just sit there moping. <laughs> Where did it all go wrong? You. That's what happened. You. You went wrong. <laughs> and she even tries to help him get back on his feet. And all like, yeah, you know, it's just. <laughs> Oh god! Oh, I just found this. Oh, oh, I just found that so funny. I just found it's literally funny. Just trying to, you know, to, you know, see if she can try and find, um, him a job for that uncle. Oh, that's so hilarious! <laughs> but just being cars completely unnecessary now. Okay, right? Yeah, but I kind of feel like he's served his purpose. Now it's time for the grown-ups to play, you know? It's time. We've had the toy boys. We've had the toy soldiers. We've had them. We've had the wallabies. Now it's time for the grown-ups to take charge and just... <laughs> oh, dear, dear. That was just quite hilarious. Right. Now let's go on to the main focus. I want to just get out of the way first. Because it was kind of like a side plot. But get out of the way first. And get the hilarious to the Because be serious now. We've got to be serious. Because, oh my, I said on the last episode, if you go back and watch the last episode, I said that trust is going to play a big M in here. I don't see uh, Cassie and all the group getting on well at all, despite the fact that all each other's really got, you know, actually each other has got here. And I just felt, how long was it going to take before Cassie would want to try and go about doing things his own, his own way? And we saw that, did we, throughout the episode, when... They were going for all the plans. We saw it, like, at the beginning where Cassian uh, said that he wanted to be take charge to be the pilot, which I think they kind of bended to that. And then later on, we're saying that Warden should actually be on the left rather than the right. right. It was, so you could see straight away those little moments where, yeah, you can tell Cassian's really, really struggling to try to be a team player. We see him try, obviously, with the tra with the training that he has to do to be, you know, to be... With, with what the other rebels um, are doing in their planned height, but you can just sort of tell they just it just you know I just you just kind of just tell that there there are common moments where you think oh my god Cassie's not going to play ball he's really not going to work well as a team particularly since not everyone's trusting particularly um scheme I did like that little conversation they had at the beginning um and it and obviously as things went along, you could sort of tell that neither one really sort of trusted um, one another. Um, <laughs> I mean, Skeen, sort of not really, I mean, how has he managed to be part of this group? I don't know, because he, he also looks like he could be someone who would actually would go in or, or his own full guns blazing, but hmm, it's just yeah. 
unlike the rest of the team. The rest of the team all seems to be kind of kind of fine, but it's just the the others. It's just but it's just him that seems to be sort of out of place. It's like because he just sort of kind of feels like he would be somebody who would be like going to do reckless, but mm, but he's part of the team. But yeah, because he's the one who really doesn't trust. Ca- Cassidy in the most, and actually at the end of it, that mistrust just, ooh, just literally just boils over. And of course, leads to obviously Cassidy being all. I knew it was, this will last. I knew, like any other cover up, I knew it wasn't gonna probably last. Probably last. So obviously, when they're travelling to the um, to the Imperial Garrison, and we have, we have a little scruffle between Skeed and Cassidy, and Cassidy basically holds up, actually, you know what? I'm being paid to do it! <laughs> But I don't get why didn't Cassie just go full hog? If I was in Cassie's shoes and I've been and my cover's been blown, I would have just said, actually, you know, Clem's not real name, I'm actually da 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 I mean you know, he could have, could have trusted them with that. I mean obviously probably not, because that may be uh, um you know, that could be maybe used against them if they get captured. But if I was in Cassie's position and my cover's just been blown, I would have just gone, you know, full hog and go, actually, do you know what? My real name actually is so and so and so. I'm like, so and we've like, just got the whole thing because we kept the whole previous three, the first three episodes right there. But, meh, but, like, mm. I actually love is how Bell actually steps up to take the lead because I remember how the last of the rails were like, you want to lead, bro? Well, here it is. Well, there we go. If only rail, if only rails there to see it because Bell really takes us like, right, call it, call it, pack it in, pair you. It's like, it's like, what do I? It's like, goodness the state, bring it, just bring it, bring it. And after all, just managed to get them all right up, and um, decides right, you're gonna, you're gonna carry on. You, know, you can deal with this later. <laughs> but uh, obviously later on, the dusk and night will see skiing. I think Ham has been sent to sort of be all apologised, but it doesn't go to. <laughs> Doesn't go too well, does it? <laughs> no, it does. It does not. Doesn't really go that well, um, at all. Not really. So, we did learn something very interesting about uh, for, for the rebels is that they have got an operative in the Imperial forces. We have a double agent. It's not Star Wars without a double agent, is it? No. <laughs> And that double agent is Lieutenant Gorn, who is aiding Bar- Bar's team. And it's kind of nice how every now and then you get to see the couple of shots with him in the Imperial Pillar Force. He's trying to like, literally barking orders. Literally, he's been doing he's just a very, very convincing job. I, if he didn't tell or he gave the game away, I would not have suspected it. If he just mentioned, oh, we've got an operative with us in the Imperial, that would have been fine. And that would have... We were fine, but the fact, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to have worked out who it was, but because you gave the, gave the game away, I kind of go, oh, I knew it was, I think, oh, I think Gore's identity should have been kept secret just a little bit. Obviously, he had the character there, and we see him in action as a, on the cover, but maybe don't reveal that to us just, just yet, just keep it, just keep it hidden, hidden for a little bit longer, and then we, we both go, oh, well, I never knew that. It was kind of, but the terrible, he was very, very convincing where we saw him run, so when they impair, oh, uh, the Imperial Force, we, he, I think he was, he was very, very convincing. But as we all know these little agents, they do get found out eventually. So even though Gore has, 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 does a brilliant job of being undercover, eventually that is going to be, he's going to get snuffed out. I can just feel it coming out really, really well. Staying with the Imperial for, Forces, we got to see more from um, Deidre, who's still... Um, trying to, um, she's got this little hunch. We saw it in the uh, last one we met for the first time. She's got this hunch that there could be a rebellion forming. She, forming, there could be something going up, and so she's still on the hut on the um, Toba Killer. And what if it's really is by the end of it, and we're only in episode five, we're about to head to the halfway point next week. But what I think is brilliant is how. She's worked out. She's managed to now come to the conclusion. Yeah, there's a re- yeah, there's a rebellion forming. There is a rebellion forming. Mm. 
So that gets me questioning, because it, look, it looks like we might, might be about to get onto the heist. We, with Bowser's group, it looks like we're about to get onto the heist. So I'm just wondering, ooh, is, is Deidre going to find them? That'd be great. It'd be great if she was her, because I think she would be more convincing and would have better better look look than can't I have her heart. <laughs> oh, but we don't want her to get dispatched either too quickly soon either. <laughs> but I just thought, oh, that was so great. Because it's like, I'm, I think I think I've got something in my maybe, I don't know, I don't know, but it's like, oh, no, no, actually, no. And by the way, she's kind of, oh. So DJ knows. DJ knows that there are rebe there are rebellions forming. Doesn't know too much. She's got she knows there's a rebellion forming. Doesn't know what's going on completely. So she's slowly getting there bit by bit by bit. But I don't think it'll be too long before she gets the whole picture together. And then she could go and take down her superior. <laughs> Bel Belvin. She can then she can then go to him and say, "Look, mate, look what I found." That would take you down a peg or two. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's quite. So yeah, so it looks like we are slowly building up cause by to go tied to the heist. It, it can't. It can't be long now. It's gotta be either next week or the week after. But we are pretty much there now. We are almost ready for the heist to go. But it's. But hmm, I can't see this is gonna end up smoothly. I've got a feeling it might end up going badly. Ooh. But that, but but is but will that be because, but but will that be because of the mistrust in the group, especially that they now know that Cassian actually is a mystery. They may not know his real name, but they now know what what he's really there because why he's really there, or is it because the Imperial forces, particularly say Deidre, not Carl, let's face it, he's a wimp. But maybe well, if some of the Imperial forces like Deidre are, well, are they going to find find out what's been going on and be on their tails? I don't think this heist is going to be as easy as it seems to be, be building up to be. Um, particularly if Cassian tries to um, sort of outmaneuver the group and try to take control and do things his way, which we kind of saw in that in that, in that episode. I had a feeling last. I say it last episode. I had a feeling that Cassian's not going to, be able to work well as a team player. He's going to want to be the one in charge. He's going to want them to try and do things his way, and we just saw that a bit. And of course, it just helped us fuel that mistrust. No. Speaking of mistrust, poor, poor, Sen poor, poor Santa, poor, poor, poor Santa, Mo Mafia. We saw it last week, didn't, didn't we? That she and her husband don't seem to be getting on that well. Well, now her daughter's also a little bit of a little action. So, oh, the poor, poor Santa, Mom Mafia. Yeah. She's got, she's not having a really no nice time, is she? Uh, but. Just a little bit from her. She has now set established a new charitable foundation. Um, I'm not too sure what that's got to do with the rebellion. It might, it might be just. It might actually. It might be part of the cover story to explain why bits of money are being moved around for charity. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah. But you can see the tech that's putting a strain, not just on her marriage, but also on. A, on her, on her daughter, so we saw it last week with the husband, and, and this week it just went up a little bit further, didn't it, with the, do the daughter. But hey, aren't all kids have, get out, have little scruffles with their parents and then? Uh, uh. And then we concluded also with Rayle, who started to get a bit anxious now. So we saw him in the, sh in, with, in like the shop, and he was like, he's getting sort of really tetchy because he's kind of waiting for a transmission, you know, from the group to see how what progress is being made. So I think he's now starting to get. So actually, this is kind of, I think this is kind of the first time we've actually seen him quite nervous. We've because up till now he's, he's been caught sort of like you know calm and collective. He's sort of been double-headed, wants to head on everybody. This I think is the first time we've kind of seen him a little bit more nervous, which was quite exciting and quite freeing to see. So we really are stepping up the tension now. We really are. So we've we've we can't be that far off now from the heist, can we? It's got to be either next week or the week after. It's got to be. We can't be too far off from this heist now. But I'm just thinking, is it going to really go as well as everyone thinks it might? I just can't see it really happening. Because obviously you've got the Imperial forces who are probably going to start catching wind. But mainly what's going to be probably going to do it is the level of mistrust. You know, particularly with Skeen. The level of mistrust 
that's within the group towards Cassian and vice versa. Especially that they now know he actually is a mercenary. He's not actually just been there because he's been paid. I don't think this is going to go. This is go well. I can easily see pe everybody going rogue at various points, particularly Cassian. And I said it before. I think he was going to struggle being a team player. We saw it in this episode. We saw how he was struggling to be a team player. And it was itching. You see, he was just kind of itching to take a leave. But of course, had to restrain himself. Had to obviously restrain himself. But it's getting good. It's getting good now. I feel like. I feel like I'm now literally getting now on board. I mean, the first episodes were, but it was kind of sort of, you know, touch and go. I still have not going to be kind of on board with it. Not was a massive thriller in episode three, and then last, then last week it was just so exciting to keep because that pace kept up. I think it was kind of this episode it was kind of slow bits at various points. Um, we could have maybe moved the pace up a bit, but all in all, it was quite, quite, it was quite all right. But I could have done without the cast of the seeds with Khan. <sighs> Honestly, this Khan seeds just made it feel like we were just wa I was just watching some some nineties sitcom. <laughs> when I'm just had to sit there and listen to his mother basically just bring, sh literally just bring him down. <laughs> if Khan wasn't already down, he's gonna be even more down now. It's just. <laughs> Oh dear. But what I felt really all was, was cars that they just sat there, just sort of moping. It's like, oh, as if, as if the world's literally just been on fire. Well, not, no, not yet. We've got a long way to go before that, mate. I think you're dead by the time that the world gets set on fire and the rebellion wins and everything. But hey. <laughs> I literally had to try at various points to try to stop myself from laughing because I just thought it was just so funny, particularly which ca the the. Ca the character that it, that it is has been literally trodden on, which is like, because I've had no love for Carl, I'm not gonna, so it's just great to see him literally just get taken. <sighs> taken to the cleaners by his own mother. <gasps> and like, I was just sitting there thinking, can Carl do anything for himself? Because basically, what his mother is, literally just literally just made all these, put all these favours to try and now get him back into some form of employment. We're not too sure what form of employment, but. Chances are, probably Carl's going to get back into some position at some point, but there's no need for him. He's useless. He's a bumbling idiot. He proved that in the first three episodes. He's no he's useless. He's a wimp. And of course, little man syndrome. <laughs> but, but, but I just thought those scenes were quite funny. It was quite hard to sort of... It was, it, was kind of it was kind of a little bit of light relief to sort of relieve the tension. But we had quite a lot of tension, didn't we, in the with the rebel group group in level thirteen. And so whenever we, whenever we whenever we cut back to Carl and his mother, it just kind of felt, oh, that was just there for a little bit of like really, <laughs> just to sort of bring the tension back down. <laughs> oh, this is brilliant! It's hilarious. It was absolutely hilarious and quite really funny. So, but I really did love seeing how. How Cassian did try. He, at the very least, he did try to see if he could maybe, you know, conform to such orders. Try to see if he could be a team player. But he used to tell that that it, she, his name was, uh, just to try and you know do it his own way, go his own way. Yeah. So I don't. So I think it would not surprise me if on the highest Cassian does try to do something um, that wasn't part of the plan to try because he just can't help himself. And also, what I also thought was really, really. Right, we've just seen those scenes with Whipple and his hand gone. Just to see how free he was undercover. But I just wish we didn't already know he was a secret Alfred agent. I would have loved if they just kept the double agent thing quiet. All Bell needed to say was, oh, we've got somebody on the inside working with us. That's all we need to, need to know. And then we can start playing the guessing game. And like for these, for these moments, like moments like this, we can then go, oh, I think it's probably so and so, it could be so and so, it could be so and so. Um. Because I did have some suspicions about Deidre last week, but obviously this week those suspicions, suspicions, I should say, are now squashed. She is so empire, loyal to the bone to the empire. She's, yeah, completely loyal to the empire. And she's very, very intelligent, being able to work out that there's a rebellion form and just like that. But, uh, but, oh, but, oh, but if I did keep the guessing game going, I thought, but... But what's interesting is when you do cut to Gorn, he's so brilliantly convincing. He's so convincing. Look like you could believe he actually isn't a lieutenant in the Imperial Forces. 
I'm just wondering how is it going to last? Because they always do get found out, and when they do, it's not long before they get kicked. Mm. Actually, speaking of that, wonder how many ca wonder if we'll have any casualties when this heist doesn't play. Because I don't see it going swimmingly. The question is, how many casualties will we have, and who? That's going to be interesting. Yeah. So we can't be too far now. Um, of this from this heist, it's got to be either next week or the week after. So we'll see how that that fares. But yeah, <sighs> the pace, is, the action's moving, moving up. We're getting closer now to be like a great, great big grand. Is it there? And it's going to be. I'm going to be so excited to see how it all unfolds. It's going to be very exciting, and we'll see. We'll see how all the levels of trust play out, and. <laughs> Because I'd say, I'm not surprised, this is just before we go, so I'm not, just like I'm not surprised that they now know that obviously why Cassian's there. But if I was Cassian and, and the cover's just been blown, I would have gone for Hongo, actually my real name's da 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 and so on and so So that's quite interesting. But I can also, I can also see probably why Cassian's did it, because obviously someone was to get captured. Say if Carbs just show up and captures one of them. So then you can maybe talk to them and try and get out of them, so. I can see, I can see the merit of why he didn't go all for Hog and feel everything, but at the same time, Probably better for the whole truth and was out there, but anyway. Mm, that could be another time. Right, thank you so much for joining us today. If you love the show, do click the like button. If you have subscribed to the channel, can click the subscribe button. That way, when you are subscribed, you never miss a single when you're calling cards, including the episode plus the mouse. And to make sure you stay up to date with all the latest content, just ring the bell to be notified. Until next time, what I've been saying is may the force be with you.